to celebrate her life and her legacy. And I pray that as we do so today, you and I will do so with this in mind, that none of us came into this world to turn stone. None of us will be here forever. It is said that today you are here and tomorrow you can be gone. Job asked the question, what is man? And then he went a bit further and he asked the question, if a man die, shall he live again? Then Paul asks a, a, a very important question. He asks, where do we go after death? He said, for it's only appointed unto us just once to die. Every one of us gets the opportunity to die once. Solomon said, it is common among all men. You can't get past death. You can't put it off, meaning that you can't reschedule it when your day and your time comes, because all of us has an expiry date. You know, you go to the store and uh, you see a, a, a beef or something, and the first thing you, you want to know, is it expired? When last did you uh, stop and, and, and consider that you have an expiry date? But guess what? It is written on the tin, but you, you and I, our expiry deed is not written on us. God has it written down somewhere in heaven. And guess what? Yours might just be next. And so I'm asking that whatever transpire here today, you bear this one thing in mind, that God is calling you. And today just might be your day of decision. At this time, our worship team is going to come and they are going to lead you out. Can you welcome them as they come, please? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand as we sing our first hymn. How great thou art.
Blessings on you. So we are going to continue. Okay, we are. Your wish, your, if you wish to do a tribute, an open tribute, now is the time for you to do that. A blessed good afternoon to each and every one of you guys. And I want to take this opportunity to say thank you guys very much for your support in whatever era you did it. It's not going unnoticed. So I just want to say thank you all very much for being here with us as a Glasgow family. So this song that I'm about to sing is a well-known song that my mom love a lot. So I promise I know her spirit is not here in person. It gone to the great beyond. But her body is here with us. So I'm not singing for the dead. I'm singing to the honor and the glory of God. And to God be the glory, great things he has done. I just want to stretch how much this strong woman was. She was a strong, 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 when you hear strong woman. And to, for that, I give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that I can copy from her. So to God be the glory. And this song entitled, There is No Other Fountain. I will draw my strength from Jesus.
morning, everybody. What's the time? It's on. Good afternoon, everybody. That's right. My poem is Grandma's Not Old Anymore. Grandma's not old anymore. Her wrinkles have all gone away. Her joints are all working and her hair is no longer gray. When grandmothers die, they instantly age down back to a little princess complete with a crown. This may not be the picture of death that you see, but my great grandmother gave me her sense of humor and it's what I choose to believe. Memories grow and memories fade, but memories of my grandgrand never go away. Her smile rests in mine, her hand held me soon. Her love fills my heart, her spirit runs to my soul. In memories of my grandgrand, the trunk of my tree, I live my life as her legacy. Good afternoon to everyone and to the rest of my families bereaving today. May you stay strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you answered God's question for your final destiny? Have you made your reservation for eternity? Your way. 
familia. I will begin my tribute with an extract from Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She's like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household. She grindeth her loin, sorry, she girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. I am not the one who is charged with delivering the eulogy, but I take some time to pen my thoughts. Luanda Glasgow and I are the grandchildren of two Seton sisters. From early childhood, my mother instilled that in me. As family was very important to her. I can well recall her lifting me over the river at Rosemead Cottage as she made it her business to visit her family in Dixon. The first home she would visit is the one where Luenda resided and then she would visit her brother, the late Edward Fraser. My reference to Proverbs 31 is not for flowery speech, but it gives a profound picture of who Luenda was. I would reflect on three major tragedies which punctuated her life. The first is when her mother, Laura Glasgow, was tragically taken from her during her early childhood in an untimely death. She was then left to the care of her then grandmother, Mrs. Hannah Blasco, Aunt Georgiana, and Uncle Charlie, whom we, Georgiana, whom we affectionately called Nanny Georgie. The second was that Sunday when she gave birth to triplets, which was marred by a rather cruel and unfortunate event. Her strength of character was, give, was again tested when her eldest daughter, Princess, died. And she arose to the occasion to become not only grandmother, but guardian and mother to her offspring. As I pay this tribute, there is a cousin in Chateaublay whose husband has been laid to rest, but I had to be here. I believe Monique will recall those cousins that she met during the recent volcanic eruption. I was asked to convey condolences from Mrs. Peggy Hull and for those younger members of the family who do not know who is Peggy Hull. She is the sister of the late Mrs. Norma Kiza, past admissions of the girls' high school, and her daughter, Her Excellency, Ambassador Andrea Bowman, who also was head bishop of the Girls High School, also the mother of Claire Kieser, proprietor and manager of the Searchlight newspaper, and also of Dr. Simone Kieser Beach. I don't think many persons know who their family is. But I must say that I'm um, the mother that uh, Mrs. Um, Kiza and I, we are all sis, um, grandchildren of two sisters and brother. I also bring condolences from a cousin, Mrs. Carlito Rodriguez, in from Bridgetown. She was the daughter of, of, of my mother's brother. Um, as we conti I continue. 
bring um, condolences from other relatives. Some of them were gone to the leeward today, as I said, as I mentioned. Today, we salute this champion of Proverbs 31. And may her soul rest in eternal peace. A blessed good afternoon, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for being here on behalf of the Glasgow family to celebrate the life of our dear, beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, Miss Luella Glasgow, Mommy Lenda, as we call her. I'm going to sing a song. I didn't know today would be your last. Heard that I had to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore Pray you just walk back through that door And tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe there will be another angel around the throne tonight. Your lovely soul inside of me, and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question, only God knows why. Oh, I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Trouble feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I fall In the world where evil come and go Where God just took the only one I know So I hold you as close When I see your face again But until then Oh God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows around the throne tonight sing hallelujah 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 I'm just jealous of the angels But 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This should be some of the time this young and Noel who's not here. Shackled by a heavenly burden, lead a load of guilt and shame. When the hands of Jesus touch me, and now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. After this one, we're going to do something else. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Please cooperate with us. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, family, friends, church. On behalf of my sister, whom couldn't be here, I will be reading this tribute. I might not be here in person to say my final goodbye. But just know that I am here in spirit as you are with me. There are so many things I can say to you right now. Take a time, take a time, take a time. Just breathe in. Take a time. Breathe but in. I want you to know that. Take a time. Take a time. No matter where you are. Take it in, take it in, take it in. Right now, no matter where you are right now, my love for you will never change. Granny, as much as I knew you were safe, I was not preparing for the news. I got from my mother a little info of me. Up to this day, I still cannot believe that you're not here. I cannot believe that I won't be calling you on the weekends or even during the week. Okay. Or even during the week after work, just to hear your voice and to catch up with you and for you to say to me, Rumi, you now need the lady. Granny, you will always say to me that I am your girl, and yes, indeed, I am yours and always will be. Take it down. You nurtured me from small up to this day, and I know you will continue to look over me from the gates of heaven, ensuring, ensuring that I am safe and blessed. I am grateful to call you my grandmother because what you have done for me growing up, it was one in a million. 
You ensure I never miss the school. You ensure that I had something to eat. When going to school, I had only three brows. Every single day I come home from school, those dogs ensure that I wore would be washed, glued, and already on the line, waiting to dry. You didn't have to do this because your hands are not strong. But you are willing. You are willing to do it anyways. And I would always say, Granny, your hands are not well. Don't pressure yourself. I can do it. And you would say to me, Ronnie, I do not mind because you would have done the same for me. You are very kind-hearted, caring, loving, free-handed, strong, and God-fearing woman. Granny, you would mold me into the woman that I am today. Well-mannered, humble, patient, and smart. My life would not be the same without you, as I am not ready to let you go. I will always remember the days I spent with you every single day by your side. I will cherish every single memory I have with you in mind for the rest of my life. If anyone knows me, Ronnie Glasgow, they know that you meant the world to me. As we lay you to rest, Granny, please, please don't forget that I love you and continue to look over me from above. I love you, my dearest mommy. Mommy. Good evening, everyone. My scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 1, from 1 to 6, a new heaven and earth. And I saw, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, we passed away were passed away, and there was no more sin. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And, and I heard a voice, a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God, and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away their tears from their eyes and there shall be no more hell. death death neither sorrow nor crying Neither shall there be any more pain for the former thing. For the, the former thing shall pass away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, <laughs> I make all, all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are so unfaithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. I will give unto him that is after of the foundation of the water of life freely. He that overcometh is he overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the faithful and unbelief and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which is burned with fire and brimstone which is the second death and there came unto me one of the seven angels which has the seven veil full of the seven sorry, seven last play and they take with me saying talk with me saying come hither I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit of, to a great and high mountain, and show me that great city, the holy, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like, just, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, 
and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names were written thereunto, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west, three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles, the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed, and measured the city, and the gate thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as, is as, large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 for long, the length and the breadth, and the height of it are equal, and the measures the wall thereof, and 140 and 4 cubits, according to the measure of the man that is the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnish. I have to stay here. Because if you continue, we will not get out of here. So to God be the glory, great is here as well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Word of God says that everything that hath bread, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At this time, the person is responsible for sharing the eulogy. Can you come, please? Good afternoon, church. On behalf of the Glasgow family, I would like to thank everyone that is here today. Um, those who have sent their condolences. Um, We've received countless telephone calls, messages, flowers, and prayers. To each and every one, we say thanks. These have been both comforting during this difficult time and a reminder of the impact that Mami, Lenda, Miss Glasgow, or Lens, as many of us used to call her, had on so many persons. I am the niece of the deceased and the daughter of her closest sister. As we all grieve for the loss of our dear family member, I have been given to task by her children to relay a few and fond memories they have of their mother. But before I get into their recollection, I want to read something. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that, the fir that first came the date of her birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Luenda Glasgow was one of six children born to Laurel Glasgow of Dixon. As mentioned earlier, Laurel met an untimely death when her children were young. And they were cared for by their grandmother and then their aunt Georgina Glasgow, who we all affectionately call Nanny. Miss Luenda leaves today 10 of her, chi 10 of her 12 children, several grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and her two remaining siblings to mourn her loss. She was truly an exceptional woman that cared not only for her children, but everyone she came into contact with, at times to a fault. If someone she loved was hurting, so was she. We will never forget her contagious laugh and light-hearted spirit. She taught us so much and helped to mold us into the persons we are today. Mami Luenda cooked the best rice and peas with stewed chicken wings. Not a grain of rice would be left behind. The chicken bone was crushed as fine as powder no dog will eat after you finish. Don't talk about her coconut juice pillow. Those used to be so sumptuous. Lens made the best bakes, dough boy, not to talk about hot cross buns and chocolate tea. Um, we will live by these words with, according to her children, which reflect the strong woman she was. There are many, but I will mention two. And, and like any good mother, these two showed the guidance that she gave, especially to her daughters. If you don't want the boy, don't take what the boy gets. <laughs> okay, right. Um, hold on, I have another one. When you're wrong, you're wrong. When you are wrong, you are wrong. So it teaches all of us to accept when we're wrong and move on from there. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping this short. Um, we believe that everyone who was fortunate to know her appreciated her warmth, the warmth and happiness she brought to everyone. Mami Luenda, we love you in life and in death. We thank everyone for the support they have given at this time. May her soul rest in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been sitting for a little while, don't we? So let's stand again. No, no, no. We'll have the eulogy first. Sorry about that. That was the eulogy. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Let's stand in the house of the Lord and sing as much as we can lustily before the Lord. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness.
Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. So, it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When a man dies. Shall tribulation, 
or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the scripture reading. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am going to invite you to stand with me again. Just excuse me. It should have been the scripture before, and um, I said, We are going to do I am dying, O oh Lord. Oh, wait, sir. Okay. I am thine, O Lord, I am but thy voice, I can hold thy love to me. But I love to rise in the arms of me, and be close to draw to me.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that should be the prayer of all of us this evening. All of us drumming error to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have one. Yes. A scripture reading from by Shadia Fraser, and she'll be reading from John 14, 1 to 6, and verse 27. Good afternoon to everyone. The scripture reading is taken from John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may also. And whither go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither the road goes, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And verses 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's the end of the scripture reading. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to invite our pastor to the podium to bring the word for us today. Welcome, Pastor Tom. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated. Let me say welcome again to those who came in late. Always a privilege to have you. Today is one of the days that um, I can't be long. So I went across to tell um, Sister Joseph I should have had her preaching today. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Job. Job chapter 8. And I want to begin at Job verse 8, Job 8 and 8. Praise the name of the Lord. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days on earth are as a shadow. Look at verse 10. Shall they not teach thee, and tell thee, and utter words out of their hearts, or out of their heart? Can the rush grow up without the mire? Can the frog grow without water? And those are two very important questions. I want you to remember them. While it is yet, in its, in its greediness, it is cut down and withered before any other herb. And it's talking about the tree. 
so are the parts of all that forget God and the hypocrite whose hope perish. Whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be as the spider's web. Our God and our Father, Thou who created the heavens and the earth, before whom, dear God, all flesh must bow. We bow before you today, Lord God. I ask, dear God, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, will speak to me and through me, Lord God, lest I mishandle your word. I ask, dear God, that the wisdom that transcends all knowledge that comes from you, Lord, would so, dear God, impact us today that we might understand and adjust and amend our ways so that, Lord God, none of us would miss out on your kingdom. Hear us, dear God, and help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I thought of what I should say to us today, and it is amazing that I prayed, I look at the Word of God, and I took uh, one of my tablet. Normally, I study from there because I get all the different uh, uh, the, the the different versions of the Bible. And as I started to go through the Word of God, not knowing that I would have read that before, the very passage at a market, and had some notes on it. And so last night, as I, as I put the, the, the other cha uh, tablet to charge and I look at it, I realize it was the very same passage. And I say, God, you are indeed amazing. And so today I want to ask us a question. What's the destiny of those who forget God and the hypocrite. And you know how touchy people can be when they hear the word hypocrite. But I'm a person who I don't just read the word of God and study the word of God. I do what you call word study because this is very important. If people don't study words, sometimes you can find yourself in trouble. And so I decided again that I must look at the word hypocrite because it is a strong word and as a God, maybe I should use another version which tone it down a little bit. But how somehow it was impacted on me that somebody needs to understand who is really a hypocrite. Because sometimes people see people going to church and they say to them, ah, there goes a hypocrite, I'm not, I'm not going to church because that church has too many hypocrites. But if I should ask you to define the word hypocrite, I wonder how many will come up with the correct meaning. Hence the reason I decided that I'm not going to turn it, tone it down. I'm just going to use the word as it is in the King James Version. And so to define the word hypocrite, it simply means the godless. And I'm going to ask you, how many godless people you find in church? Or how many ungodly people you find in church? You see, sometimes what we do, we just look at people and we find words or ways of redefining who they are. And if people are not careful, they live their lives according to our opinion. And no one should be boxed in. 
No one should be kept. No one should be held captive based on what was said to them or what was spoken over their lives. So you wouldn't, you, you, you would hardly find a hypocrite according to uh, the Greek in church. Because a man who doesn't understand who God is, who, who do not believe in God, would not want to associate with the people of God. So the next time you're thinking of calling somebody who attend church a hypocrite, go back and check the original word. It also means someone who is profane, someone who has been polluted, someone who has been defiled by sin. And, and, and I love how, how, how the, 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 the writer put it. He said, at the last, when they give the, they give the last definition, he said, someone who has been defiled by sin. Have you been defiled by sin? Are you a sinner? Do you know the Lord? Then if I were you, I will not call someone as a hypocrite. I will say, I am a hypocrite. So the next time you think of calling somebody a hypocrite, make sure you consider your status in life. And that's something I like to do. I like to clear the air. Because I don't want people to go away saying, Pastor, call me a hypocrite. All right? Now we can get to the word of God. Job was writing. And Job asks us in, in verse 8 of the book of uh, Job. He asks us to consider some things. He said, I want you to go back and rediscover the part of the elders. Think about your forefathers. I listened very well as some people gave their, their tribute. They spoke of their grandma, they spoke of their aunt, some spoke of, of their mother, and they, they, they explained to us how good a person she was. She had beautiful morals. But can I tell you something? Our morals really doesn't define who we are. What defines who we are is the way we live. I can have all the manners in the world. I can be obedient to everyone. But if I don't obey God, I'm going to die in my sin. And therefore, there's only two kind of people in the world. Those who are saved, those who are born again, and those who are lost. The godly and the ungodly. And there's no two ways about it. It's either you know God or you don't know him. And somebody said, I know God. From the child, from childhood, that's not what I'm talking about. You know of God, but to know God is to have a relationship with Him. Yeah. To be related to God is to have the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing you, the word of God said, from all unrighteousness. Then you have peace with God. You have a relationship with God. You know that should you die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so as Job was, was, was speaking, he said here in, in verse 9, We are but of yesterday, and we know nothing, because our days on the earth are a shadow. I wonder why Job said that. Job was dead into something. He was going to explain to us how vulnerable we 
are as human beings. And, and, and this is something that many of us need to understand, especially those of us who are young. And I consider myself young. I'm going past 50, but I still have a mountain to climb. God's not done with me yet. The devil thought that last month and the month before, he was going to kill me, but I'm still here. And because I'm still here, that's why I'm so loud. The Bible says childhood and youth is vanity. And I watch this generation that we are nurturing. They don't want anything to do with God. They believe that because they are more educated than we were yesterday, than their mothers and their fathers are. They believe that because they can define everything and anything and redefine them too. And I'm going to get to that. According to Romans chapter 1. Everything today for this generation needs to be redefined. God said I made them both male and female. This generation said, you are who you feel like. So if you are born a woman and you feel like a man, then you are a man. But that's a lie from the pits of hell. God said, therefore, I will judge the world because we have really left our natural use. Men want to be men and be with men. And women don't want to be women anymore. Why do you think that we have the pandemic? <laughs> you won't hear this in Parliament. Because if you read the whole chapter of Romans, the word of God said to him, they know it is wrong. They are indulging in it and they have pleasure in them that do it. So therefore, they are participating in it. They are having pleasure in it. They are having fun in it. And God said, I'm going to judge them. So the Bible said, because we are of, yes, we are of yesterday, Though knowledge has increased in this generation, the Bible said we still don't know nothing. Paul said in, in 2 Timothy, ever learning but not being able to come to the knowledge of the true why? Because they are teachers having itching air. They only want to hear what they want to hear. So if pastor said homosexuality is wrong, if he said lesbianism is wrong, I'm not going back to the church because he insulted me. I'm here to insult the devil and let you understand unless you repent the will of God said, you are going to perish. So with all the technology that we have, all the education that we have, in other words, what the word of God is saying, we are still Scottish. Somebody said that I wasn't born in Scotland. <laughs> it means that we are foolish. We are ignorant. I'm jumping, I'm running. I don't want to be longer than 15 minutes. Otherwise my doctor probably will come and send me to the hospital. But, but look at verse 10. It says, shall not they teach thee and tell thee, in other words, with all the wisdom that we think we have, in order for us to really understand who God is, we still have to learn from the elders. Do you understand? They don't want the Bible in school. So now what happened? Children can go to school and if you don't feel like participating in, in, in devotion, 
You can hide one on the street or you can walk out of the auditorium. Several times I, I met the children from the secondary school and I said, again, yeah, you are late, let me take you. Pastor, guess what? Bro? We don't want to go for crazy. Enough. And some of them go to church. Their parents attend church. What's so wrong about devotion? We just smell like devotion. Can you understand why the world is in so much trouble? Can you understand why violence is taking over our nation? Why so many of our young people are perishing without knowing Jesus Christ? Because they don't want anything to do with God. And the system is so set up that if you are an atheist, it is easy for you to get into the education system. It wasn't designed by man. It was designed by the devil to indoctrinate our children. So then go back to the elders, man. Let them teach you. Let them tell you. Let them tell you about life. What does God require? What does God say? Let God be God and every man a liar. Lest he repent, God said, you are going to perish. In other words, you're going to die in your sin. Well, guess what? Some young still here. And guess what? I know mommy little when they die in the heart of carnival. You don't know what they go after that. Right? They have it when it's this. <laughs> Pastor, let me wait till carnival is done. That's what you said. The year before, and the year before, and the year before, and the year before. And guess what happened? You are going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in sin. And while you are planning and preparing, the word of God said, Hell is making room for you. Hell is enlarging itself. Because hell wasn't made for you and I. Hell was made for the devil and his angel. But because we chose to go there, hell started to expand. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. God has already prepared a place for every man. That's what? Many of us are now rejecting God, walking away from God. We don't want to associate with him. That's old fashioned when I get old. Maybe when I get as old as you are and don't have no hair on your, my head, I'll come and serve God. That's for old people. But I heard the word say, my God is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He was and is, and tomorrow he shall be God. And if you die today and you don't know him, you're going to stand before him. Go today, he's a savior. Tomorrow! Going to be a consuming fire. They say we are in a Christian nation, but yet we are murdering each other. We are raping one another. And we are doing all kinds of things. We are robbing each other. And, 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 and do you know who is a hypocrite? The, the, the word hypocrite also means someone of oh God Almighty. A common man. That's what they also mean. One who takes advantage of another, a deceiver, pretending to be who you are not. You're here today, and I don't need long invitation, three minutes of course, if you need Jesus. Slip your hand up where you are. With heads bowed and eyes closed, it's not time to be looking at others. We're looking into your heart. Mom died to give you an opportunity to come to the house of God so that your soul can be saved. How beautiful it would be if she died so that you can obtain salvation. I see that hand. Are there others? Young man, young woman, young boy, young girl. You're here today. You've never trusted the Lord and Savior. Maybe you're a backslider. Two more minutes. What if you have two more minutes to live? What would you do with it? What if you were in the hospital today and somebody walked in and said to you, 
saw a mom. You have two more minutes to live. What are you going to do here? Some of you would call for the preacher. But guess what? The preacher is going to take too long to come. You don't have to call for the preacher. You need to call on Jesus. Today, the word of God says, make your calling and your intention sure. Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Of all the people in here, only one person needs Jesus. Are there others? Who's going to be next? You're there. You don't know Jesus. You don't have a relationship with him. Maybe you're thinking about all the activities that will be taking place in the next few days. Then you best start, start talking about thinking about the coming of the Lord. I'm not asking you if you go to church. You can go to church for the rest of your lives and you are going to split hell wide open. You need to know the Savior because one day, if you don't know him, he's going to say, Behold, I never know him. He said, But well, Lord, I went to church. I took communion. I was a part of the choir. I, I even I went down the road visiting people, the sick. I visited the, the prison and the hospital. He said, Listen to me, I don't know him. Well, well my Lord, I know you. He, he would ask, How do you know me? I heard your name in some school. You can hear my name, but you don't know me. To know understand who I am. You have a relationship with me, with you. With me, sorry. One more minute. You are here today. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but you want to surrender your heart to me. I'm not asking you to commit. You, when people commit, guess what? They can break their commitment. But when you surrender, it means that somebody is taking control. And when someone takes control, where he leads me, I'm going to follow. That's what it means to surrender. When the police put a gun on you and say, put your hand up, you throw your hands up in the air because you don't want to die. Here, God is saying to you, do the same thing or you're going to die. You're going to die in your city. 30 seconds. Well, if you have 30 seconds to, to live, would you say, I will with Jesus? Like the scribes and the Pharisees. Or would you say, Lord, have mercy on me? All you need is five seconds to say, Lord, put somebody's hand. I never close a funeral service without praying for the family. I know what death can bring. It can bring you reunion. But my God, it can bring division. When my mom died, I saw my siblings, whom I didn't see for a long time. But when they, 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 they left, it's like everything fall apart. Because people love to play the blame game. When people die. And the funny thing is that we don't fight for them while they are alive. But we fight over every foolishness when they are gone. But today, I'm speaking to this devil. And I say to the devil today in the name of Jesus Christ. As long as you have to make up your mind that you are sitting here. And what is broken, you are going to mend. If you don't, you will have 40 months for generation. My, my word. The people who die, they have sons and daughters. Their children are abroad. And they don't know their aunties, they don't know their uncles, they don't know their cousins. Why? Because somebody refused to talk to somebody. God give you more. Not to slander each other. But to love and appreciate each other. Here, you are not, you are not, you are all, uh, you all are different. God made you so know why? Because He wants you to complement each other. When you understand, I might be a left feeling, I am left handed, and the other person is right handed, it doesn't mean that something is wrong with them to 
understand their God. That they, they know it's not a time to be fighting. No, it's not a time for struggle. But now is a time, dear God, for them to stand together. Hold up each other's hand, Lord God. Because, dear God, the anchor is not here. Doesn't mean that family is over. Father, I rebuke every spirit of division. I rebuke every spirit, dear God, that will rise up and try to slander anyone today. And in the name of Jesus, I send them back to the pits of hell. I declare Satan that the fire of God is upon you. Lord, I plead your blood each around each and every one of them. I declare that not one of them shall die a day short of their purpose, but they shall live and become all that you intended for them to be. Lord God, we decree it and we declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. amen. God bless you. And the son, the worship leaders are going to come. I'm asking that while we're going now, while we're exiting the building, you allow me to go, the casket follow, the family follow, and then the congregation will follow. Bless you.
We brought nothing into this world and we can certainly carry nothing out of this world. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal immortality, then shall it be brought to pass. The writing, O oh, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the grave. But thanks be to the Lord, who has given us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can you play something for us? Play something for us.
is steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the Lord, for as much as he know that your labor would not be in vain in the Lord. For as much as it pleases our Heavenly Father, in his great and divine providence, to take from us our beloved Luenda Glasgow. We now therefore commit our body to the ground, looking for the blessed hope and blessed appearance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hereby we pay the last rite, the living to the dead, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Spirit is gone back to the Lord who gave it to you. I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Yea, the Spirit said, they rest from their labor and their works now follow them. Shabaka.
Okay, okay this time we are going to do the grace and then um, I know you like you guys like to sing and dance and have fun. You have until tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> May grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, our Savior, our Comforter be with you all in life and in death and through all eternal life. Amen. I pray that um, as you guys sing and celebrate that you guys never forget that your day is coming and you need to make adjustment so that death would not catch you off guard. God bless you, and may the Lord God keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and grant you this. Amen. Amen.